So I'm going to go ahead on and get into the text. I'm not going to uh, do a long recap by the grace of God. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead on and read it, y'all, in 1 Timothy, man. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, y'all. The Bible said, therefore, I exalt, first of all, that supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. That it bless your word, God. Take, God, who my little two fish and loaves, God, and feed the multitude, God. Be with us, God. Bind the enemy, God. We know that prayer, God, is one of the, 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 the most powerful things, God. And one of the things that Satan fights the hardest, God. So be with us as we get in your word concerning prayer, God. Let not the enemy be able to steal it, God. Oh, any tactics, God, come against what you are doing in this hour. Let your angels stand guard about around us for the Lord. Cover and keep us, Daddy, and imprint our hearts with prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' name. So this is our second point, y'all, and it's called the place of prayer. The place of prayer, and that's like, what, part two of it, I think, y'all. And um, we're going to continue just flowing through, and I'm going to take my time. And last time I came, tell you with a little book by um, John Wesley, one of the, one of the, um, the, 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 the saints, man, ooh, in the, in the, in the Gentile community, man, who, who was a part of the Great Awakening, yo, you know what I'm saying? And um, that brother got a book on how to pray, and I told y'all I was going to be bringing different books because I want you to study this thing on your own, you know what I'm saying? I don't want you to just be strong in one area, but lacking in the other, other area. And one of the strongest areas we need to not be lacking in is prayer, y'all, is prayer. So, man, I be buying these books, man. And this is one of my old ones. That other one was a kind of new one. But this one is um, E.M. Bounds, y'all, on prayer. The prayer warrior, E.M. Bounds. And that's an old saint, you know what I'm saying? Like, And you're going to need some of them old foundational things, man, to get you through. In this hour that's coming, y'all. We've been going through the scripture. We're dealing with an hour. It's called the evil day, y'all. The evil day, and we're watching it happen before our eyes. So we want to be equipped. And there's no way to be equipped better than prayer. Better than prayer, you know what I'm saying? So we've been going into prayer, man, and just opening up this corporate prayer. But also... We want prayer to affect your personal life and the personal things around you. So we're going to pick up, y'all, where we stopped. We stopped with sub point A, sound boot. Sub point A, and I'm going to kind of just flow through it and recap, and we're going to be getting into Ephesians, y'all. We're going to be getting into the armor of God again. The armor of God. The armor of God. So we started with um, sub point A, y'all, just talking about that it should always be placed first in our life, talking about prayer. And we said, why? Why should it be placed first in our life? Well, the first thing we talked about, but, but the reason why it should be, be placed first, I have in my notes, is because prayer undergirds every spiritual weapon that God gave us. It undergirds it. It stands as a as a solid foundation, y'all. Who that prayer that 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 every one of these spiritual weapons is built upon, and we see that in Ephesians chapter six. And I'm gonna read it, and then we gonna just pick up where we stop, y'all. We gonna pick up where we stop. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter six, verse thirteen through eighteen. And Sambu got it up there. The Bible said, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in this evil day. This evil day. Having done all to stand. Verse 14. Stand, therefore. Ooh, and that's so deep. Ooh, this evil day, y'all. You know what I'm saying? This evil day. Having girded our waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, 
with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, for all the saints. And in this scripture, we see that prayer undergirds all these spiritual weapons that we have as believers, y'all, which is detrimental to our faith. We see in the scripture that prayer comes under, it undergirds all these spiritual weapons. And we went deep about that, talking about how to undergird. It means it sort of acts as a foundation. And we talked about that last time, y'all. It it acts as a as a structure being laid, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And we went deep into that, just talking about how this undergirding is made to hold up a structure in place. It's made to keep the structure from moving, y'all, from moving. And that's what this this prayer does to every spiritual weapon that we have. It undergirds. And then we just went in because God began to speak and give revelation. We compared this thing. We we, 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 we brought it and, 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 um, and brought it into correlation with Jesus being the chief cornerstone. If you remember, y'all, Jesus being the chief cornerstone, the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected, that the builders rejected in Acts, y'all. It talks about that. You know what I'm saying? And Jesus was the foundational stone that everything pertaining to God is built upon, is built upon. Not only that, we looked at Romans that Jesus is not only the chief cornerstone, but he's the first fruits of the resurrection. He's the first fruit of the resurrection, y'all. And in Romans 8, 29, he talks about being the firstborn, y'all, of many, of many brethren. Meaning that he's the first to, to, to resurrect from life. Oh, God. And the resurrection is important for us as Christians because why? It's our ticket, y'all. Our ticket to get in heaven. It's our receipt. It's something that we can bank upon, y'all. And he was the first fruits of that. But he's all, also the firstborn of many brothers, meaning Jesus was the first Christian. And we made the correlation. That's how prayer should be in our life. Because everything pertaining to God, Jesus is not only the foundation undergirding everything, but he's also the, the, the start of everything. He goes before everything. And that's what prayer should be in your life. Prayer should go before everything that's in your life, but it also should undergird everything that's in your life. You know what I'm saying? Prayer, we say, it, it, it operates as being the leader of every direction you go in your life, but also the caboose, y'all. Also the caboose. And that's where we correlated this prayer to no other than Jesus the Christ, yo. You know what I'm saying? Who was the chief cornerstone. Because that's how prayer operates. It operates as a foundation to everything that we're trying to build. And a lot of time we building on a foundation that's not solid. We building on a foundation that's saying, and you know the scripture in the, in the gospel about the parable about him who built the house on sand and another who built his house on stony ground because the wind going to come, y'all, and blow upon every house. Newsflash, no matter how much Christian you be, no matter how perfect you, you, you think you in line with God, understand that the wind will come. And blow upon your house. And we going to see. What's your foundation. We going to see. We going to see if it's built upon the rock. The chief cornerstone. Or is it built. Upon sand. Y'all? And anything built on prayer. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. 
is a solid foundation. You see this ministry that, that, that done made it all the way to Dallas and even trying to go to Houston? This thing was built on the foundation of prayer, yo. And churches are losing hold to that. Men and women of God are losing hold to that. And we see a lot of sinking going on. Let's be real. We see a lot of sinking going on. Why, yo? Because we're not having a solid foundation. Who? I told you last time. And it's God that brought us into this prayer. We was going in about the priest. And what does a priest do? He stands in the gap. He stands in the gap. For, for, for who? Not for God. He stands in the gap for people. He stands in the gap for, for mankind, for God's people, yo. He goes to God on the behalf of the people. You know what I'm saying? But everybody want to be prophets. Everybody want to be what? Kings. And, 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 and it's all right to be that because God had made us prophets. He had made us kings. But we can't forsake to be priests, man. He had also made us priests, yo. And that office is all about prayer. All about prayer. <laughs> all about prayer, yo. And we dealt, y'all, with this first one, just going in about it. We talked about prayer undergirds truth. It undergirds truth because in the text, that's the first thing that it talks about. When you read it, it said, therefore, take up the, the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand, stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, with truth, with truth. And we talked about how prayer undergirds truth. And we just went in about truth that truth itself is also, it also could be, be, be looked at as a foundation. A foundation. And we told you that, that what I prayer undergirding truth, y'all, it can't be strapped and maintained on your waist. You're going to be wishy-washy. In this evil day that we're living in, why? Because lies or bombarding truth, yo. Lies. Lies from who? From Satan, the father of lies. Who was a liar what? From the beginning. And we're trying to, we're trying to maintain truth in our life. But every day is being bombarded with lies. Like water hitting the, the, the she shore back, back and forth. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times it caused us to do what? To be shaky. One day we in, and the next day we out. And we looked at the scripture, how it talks about, you know what I'm saying? Not being tossed by every wind of doctrine, two and four. You know what I'm saying? But being settled in truth, man. One day you're in, the next day you're out. And the Bible talks about, Paul talks about it, what? He's saying these last days, men going what? They're not going to be able to endure sound doctrine. And we just bringing everything back to the Bible. We talked about how one day you're a Hebrew and then the next day you're not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This thing is all about identity only. All about our ethnicity, our real culture. Who God. The culture that your people was founded upon, man. Your, your, your beginning don't start at the slave docks, you know? And God been giving me revelation, this black and this white lie brought all kind of confusion. It was never so, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, that's not even really, not, that's not even, ooh, God, when you, man, they, the devil done put the, but, but man, he done did a work on us, Miss Terry. He got us calling ourselves black. <laughs> and our, 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 ooh, God, our, our, our owners, them that, 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 that want to keep us down, they call themselves white. That's not even, ooh, God, that's, that's never supposed to be, y'all. 
It was a time in the earth where nobody was called by a color, man. You had ethnicity, Tedrick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you, you had a nationality, man. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't black. You know? And God just want to bring us back to that. Bring us back to that. You got a history. You got ethnicity. Who? You got an identity in me. You know what I'm saying? And he's doing everything that he could do to open our eyes. And the best thing he did to me was to give us biblical. You know what I'm saying? Biblical truth, not just from no prophet, but from the prophet. Jesus the Christ in Revelation, our founding scripture, y'all. You know what I'm saying? He said, I know them who say they are Jews, but are not. But do lie. They are the sinner God of Satan. You know what I'm saying? So truth is foundational, man. And that's where the Holy Spirit is going, y'all. Because he got to bring back the original branch to lead the church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then we went, let's I digress. We moved on and talked about prayer undergirding righteousness. Righteousness. To be exact. You know what I'm saying? The breastplate of righteousness we talked about. And we talked about how it's, a, it's, it's, it's uh, Paul, he makes this depiction, y'all, of this, this armor of God. This armor of God, he makes this depiction from looking at the Roman soldier. The Roman soldier. Sound good, you can pull up that picture. The Roman soldier, and we talked about this breastplate of righteousness, how it protects the chest area of the Roman soldier. It protects his chest area, yo. And we know the chest area, there are many vital organs. You know what I'm saying? And we can't, we said last time, we can't afford to get hit with one of these fiery darks from Satan in our chest area. So we have something called the breastplate of righteousness, y'all, even in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? That protects our spiritual chest area we talked about. You know what I'm saying? And we said without prayer undergirding this righteousness. We said that righteousness protects our spiritual chest area. And without prayer undergirding it, who God. That breastplate of righteousness is not going to be able to be founded, who stayed fast upon our chest area. You know what I'm saying? And we talked about it. We went deeper by just talking about how we obtain righteousness, how we obtain the, the imputed righteousness from Christ when we receive salvation. But he also gives us and wants us to operate in personal righteousness. You know what I'm saying? And the way we keep ourselves clean, the way we keep ourselves clean beside the word, and we talked about it, beside the word, what we do, we pray the prayer of repentance. Not sometimes, but what? But daily. Mm. We correlate it to taking a bath. When you go out after a hard day of work and go into the world, you go come back home and do what? Wash yourself. Same thing with the word. Same thing in Christ. We got to continue to wash ourselves. We coming home and we staying dirty, calf. And it's like, it's like, a, it's like a wheel that roll. You got to understand that, that, that the more that it roll without being clean, it piles up like a snowball. Like a snowball. And then you cleaning off things that don't even need to be clean. You know what I'm saying? That, 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 that's supposed to been be clean. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's so hard to clean it now. now. Now you're dealing with a whole snow mountain where you could have been clean it beforehand. Who? When you got just a little snow on it. When you got just a little dirt on it. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to get in the bad tub and our bad tubs be dirty with, with, with stains around the rim, man. That means you ain't been taking a bad right. You know what I'm saying? 
And God looking down and God says, son, you done went out in this world this evil day. Even though you done tried your best and I know you're not operating in open sin, but you done sin. My daughter, you done sin. Why? Because you're not perfect. Oh, God, you're not perfect. And we looked at the scripture in 1 John. You're not perfect. All have sinned. He said, come to me. Oh, God, and confess your sins. He said, I'm going to cleanse you from all unrighteous. You know what I'm saying? He said that if we say we have no sin, we do lie. And the truth is not in us. So we got to be real with ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So we talked about that's how we stay clean. The prayer of repentance, saints. We got to get back to old school church, man. We can't just be doing things like, like, like a sister told me. You know what I'm saying? We can't just be out here. You know what I'm saying? Without repenting, man. Without getting right, man, before the father. Without coming to him after that day and saying, Daddy, forgive me of known sin, unknown sin, conscious and unconscious sin. Wash me clean, Lord. And that's the heart David had. David said, let me quickly repent with the smallest of sin, man. You know what I'm saying? To where, to where you ain't got to deal with these big things. Because if you're faithful with the small sins, God knows you're going to be faithful with the big ones. Who God in the name of Jesus. If you repenting for the smallest things, there's no way you're going to want to get caught in one of these big things. You know what I'm saying? But we think that we could just, no, no, we got to get it right before daddy, man, before our father. He wants a bride that's, that's spotless and blameless, y'all. Not perfect, but blameless. And that's what we strive to be in this evil day. This broken, who and perverse generation, y'all. We got to want to be holy. Why? Because he said, be ye holy, for I am holy. That's his commandment. That's his commandment, y'all. And we got to be lights among lights. I love to say that in my family. Because a lot of times we strive to just be lights. And you could be a light to the dark world. But are you a light in the house of God? Are you a light among lights? <laughs> that's another level right there. But that's what he's calling us to. He always calls us up, yo. You know what I'm saying? He accepts us as we is. But he don't leave us as we were. That's his macho. That's how he get down. That's how he rock. That's how he roll, man. You know what I'm saying? That's how he get down. So now we want to deal with this prayer undergirding the gospel of peace. Undergirding the, the gospel of peace, y'all. Undergirding the gospel of peace. And I'm going to go ahead on and read it just to bring us up um, in speed in verse 12. He, Verse 13, the Bible say, stand therefore, I'm going to start at verse 14. You got it, sound boot? Stand therefore, having gird your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15, where we want to be, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, of the gospel of peace. Who are we going to take our time? I'm trying to get through it as quick as I can, y'all. But the spirit, the spirit want to download some things to us. Me and my wife been talking, man. And so y'all forgive me. I, I said, Lord, let me not move too slow, but let me not move too fast. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, so we could get what we need to get. But this prayer, y'all, and that's the correlation we making because the prayer of repentance, what it is, it's a prayer. It's the weapon of prayer. And what it does, it undergirds our breastplate of righteousness. But this prayer also undergirds the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace in your life. It undergirds it. I have in my notes now this armor of prayer is called the gospel of peace. That's called the, the gospel of peace, y'all. 
was depicted by the Apostle Paul from looking at the strap tight sandal shoes or the certain type of boots. Sound boot, let me get that picture if you don't mind. You know what I'm saying? Why I read this because I need you to get a visual of this. You know what I'm saying? From looking at the, because that's what Paul was looking at when he was thinking about the arm of God. He was looking at the Roman soldier. Who? That's what he was thinking about, Miss Terra. Paul was a Roman citizen, a Hebrew, of Hebrews. Who? We talked about that. But Paul was looking at this Roman soldier and he said, having your, your, your feet shod with the gospel of peace. He said, he said, from looking at it, I have in my notes is at these strap type sandal shoes or certain type of boots, y'all. You know what I'm saying? That the Roman soldiers wore while they were inside of a battle. While they was on the battlefield. These are the boots. These are the sandal straps that they wore. Y'all, these are the shoes that they wore. And upon the shoes that they wore, y'all, I have in my notes, they would attach in the front of it an iron or a metal shin guard. An iron or a metal shin guard. Can you see that? That's all connected with the, with the shoe. Y'all, they would place it on top of the front of the shoe, covering or protecting the shin of the leg and we're going to get back into that but going even deeper John MacArthur in his commentary y'all he says that they would also put nails underneath their shoes they would put nails underneath their shoes why y'all to grip the ground while they were in hand to hand combat to grip the ground so they wouldn't be easily moved I have in my notes y'all so their enemies wouldn't be, be able to easily push them backwards. Ooh. The scripture tells us, Miss Terra, to stand and to stand, therefore. So God gives us equipment to stand. <laughs> he gives us equipment to stand, y'all. Shoes that's not slippery and don't have grip. Nah, but shoes that some even say... They would put spike nails underneath it. Shoes that was attached with shin guards on the front of it. You know what I'm saying? This, this, ooh, this, to, to endure, to stand in this hand-to-hand -hand combat. I have in my note, side note, this is how spiritual warfare of wrestling looks like. Because this hand-to-hand -hand combat, when you go and read commentary, you know what I'm saying? It was depicted as a wrestling, y'all. Who as a wrestling. You see, we think Satan just want us, don't go allow us to have some space, Tedrick, you know what I'm saying? And hit and don't get hit. Nah, he want to make it an ugly fight. And we're going to get into that. He want to make it an ugly fight. He want to make it a wrestle. Who a wrestle? A wrestle. And the thing about wrestling is it exerts a, a large amount of energy. You even got to get on the ground sometimes and get dirty, man. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of wrestle that he want to have with you, saints. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to get in touch. We're going to bring it to life because that's the wrestle he want to have. I have in my notes this spiritual warfare, and we've been talking about that of wrestling. It looks like. It, it looks for us, y'all, as Christians, in the spirit. This is how it looks. I have in my notes, it's an up-close, in-range, hand-to-hand combat of battle, y'all, against Satan and all of the dark side. Against Satan and all of the dark side, y'all. Against all of his cunning ways. Not some I have in my notes, but all of his cunning ways. All of his lies, y'all. All of his taxic, tactics I have in my notes of casting spells. <laughs> all of his tactics of casting spells. Do you know what your enemy doing, Christian? Huh, believer? Do you know the, 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 the devices? The, that's what the Bible teaches us. He said, don't be what? Ignorant of Satan's devices. 
His, his tactics of casting spells, y'all, of wickedness. And to cast a spell is to try to curse or to send an evil spirit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to get it off for the record since we're here. I don't believe Christians could be possessed. You know what I'm saying? Christians who filled with the Holy Spirit, I don't believe we could be possessed by evil spirits. You know what I'm saying? By demons. But I do believe we could be tormented by and pushed into fear because Satan know that the fear of man does what? Work it a snare. You know what I'm saying? I believe we could be tormented by him. I also believe we could be manipulated and controlled by him. We could be manipulated and controlled by him. That's why God said he had to shorten the time lest all of the believers be what? Be deceived. Be deceived. So he can use these spirits, these spells, you know what I'm saying, to manipulate us. You know what I'm saying? And he's casting these things, y'all, and we talked about it over nations, over states, over cities, over neighborhoods, over individual people, y'all, even over Christians. And I believe the Christians is this their greatest target, yo. Greatest target. And how is he doing it? Through ranks, through his ranks of principalities, powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness, which are evil spirits who are wicked, yo, in high places or heavenly places, which is no other than spiritual places. Spiritual places I have in my notes, y'all. You know what I'm saying? He used, you know what I'm saying, through his witches and warlocks. Through his witches and warlocks. Satan had witches and warlocks, y'all. This dark side is real yet, yeah, whether you know it or not. All these different things that's being introduced to Christians, yoga, and all these different means and methods of things. You got to be careful with these things, saints. Satan is looking for a door to enter, man. And it's not easy in this evil day. It's not easy. But we got to hold the line, y'all. If we're going to be successful for his glory. You know what I'm saying? Or otherwise you're going to be a lukewarm Christian. Or otherwise, you're going to be tossed to and fro. Or otherwise, you're going to be ruining your witness if you is a real Christian. You know what I'm saying? He's doing it through witches and warlocks, y'all. And it's one of the fastest religions that's growing. A while back, I taught a message about Wicca. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, it's growing fast and it's increasing. Paul had talked about the increase of the demonic activity going on right under our nose. You know what I'm saying? And I know you've been feeling the spiritual warfare as we talk about this. You know what I'm saying? You see y'all pulling stuff out of me, man. Now, I'm going to bring it because it's going to bless y'all too because you got to know this as a Christian. You know what I'm saying, wife? It's good. You know, I was walking, y'all. Me and my wife go walk, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we take our little walks, man. And uh, they got a nice spot, you know, not too far from our house, by our house. And uh, they got the creeks, man. They got the water for, uh, sprinkling up. Miss Terry is nice in that area, you know. So right there in our, our back door, you know. So we go take our little walks and stuff, man. So, you know, one day I'm walking, y'all. And um, I was kind of running, and then I would walk. But as I'm walking and coming towards the creek, coming down, I see a frog coming running out the grass. I'm looking at this thing. He coming running out the grass, and I'm like, I never experienced nothing like that full speed. He hopping. I said, man, look, this frog. But when I look behind the frog, they had a black snake, a black water moccasin coming with full speed, y'all at this frog. So when I seen it, 
It kind of spooked me. Nick saw, whoa, my jump, like, whoa, what's going on? I got out the way. But when I reacted like that, all the attention of the snake came on me. Whoo. And the frog was able to get away. So the snake came upon the sidewalk, y'all, and he did something that he wouldn't usually do. And that's what I told my wife. She said, that's spiritual. Who God in the name of Jesus. This water moccasin raised up his neck, y'all, like a cobra and looked at me like a stare down. And when God began to minister to me, and talk, he, said, he said, son, I'm bringing you in areas that's interrupting the devil. <laughs> I'm bringing you in areas and you causing a disruption. Who you causing a disruption in the things that Satan is trying to do. You know what I'm saying? And for you as Christians. You got to understand that where you go and the ways you move and the things you enter. who Satan, you're going to be a target. Why? Because you're disrupting things. You're disrupting what he's trying to do just by being yourself. Just by being a Christian, just by naming the name of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand that about yourself. You're different. Whether you want to be or not. We told you as soon as you get saved, you automatically enlist yourself into a warfare. Into a warfare. And it's not to scare you, it's to prepare you. You know what I'm saying? Because who lives on the inside of us make demons tremble, y'all. So don't be scared. <laughs> You got a, you got a, oh God, you got the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords living on the inside of you. It's a testimony to what you're doing. It's a testimony that hells know your name, man. Hell know your name. You know what I'm saying? What the scripture said, Paul I know, this one I know, but who are you? Do hell know your name like that? That's how you decide. That's how you see if you're a Christian or not, are you holding the line? You know? God bless you. God bless you. For his glory, y'all. But as I got into this, and who God is warlocks we talking about. Ooh, I done got off of off my subject, you know what I'm saying? But to keep going, that's why y'all have in my notes, we got to be watchful of the things we touching. Or the things we getting into. We have to be watchful of the things we watching with our eyes. And the things we are listening to with our ears. And this is for the youngsters. I tell my daughter them all the time. Your eyes and your ears are your gateway to your soul. You know, and you know how, how, how them youngsters is right now. All they do is flip. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, they're on social media and they flip, man. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to see some things that you're not supposed to see. Even when we study and then I tell them this, I bring this to them. I say, daddy got to go. I say, daddy got to gotta make sure I got to put certain filters and do certain things to keep myself in this evil day. You know what I'm saying? So I know. You know what I'm saying? So don't just think daddy on you just to be on you. Nah, I'm on you because I love you. And I don't want you to see things that you're not supposed to see. I don't want you to be listening to things that you're not supposed to be listening to. Why? Because it's going to open a door in your life. And you're going to have to fight things that you, that you shouldn't have to fight. You're going to have battles that you shouldn't have to have. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we have battles based upon our own, who, our own doing, y'all. We opening up doors of things that we don't know of. Therefore, it's causing us battles. And for high school, listen, you know what I'm saying? Understand what I'm saying. College, if you're in college, understand what I'm saying. Keep yourself, man. Watch, be watchful. You know what I'm saying? 
Be watchful. Because it's not only going to bless you, but it's going to bless others around you. You'll be able to tell them the truth in love. You know what I'm saying? And lead them out of harm's way, y'all. But to keep going, and more so for us as Christians, man, and I got to keep, keep balking up on that because Christians really think they safe out here, man. We think we can't be touched, man. We think that God has just, just, just got a, a, a glass globe around us that nothing could touch us as we walk through life. And that's not the case, y'all. That's not the case. That's not the case, you know. I have in my notes, we got to be armored up with the armor of God, literally, y'all. And, 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 and maybe, you know, I talked about it, you know, we probably be able to get in these Get, get in how to put it on. You know what I'm saying? You know, I've been, been praying about that to see, you know, later, you know. <clears throat> but um, we got to literally, man, put this thing on. We got to be armored up, y'all. I have in my notes, as we move about in the midst of three things, y'all, of different people, places, and things. Whoo! People, places, and things. We got to be careful as we move about. We got to be watchful as we move about in the midst of these things, y'all. Why? Because Jesus told his disciples, y'all. He told them, he said, I send you out as sheep among wolves. I send you out as sheep among wolves. Among wolves. Among wolves. You know what I'm saying? Going even deeper. You know what I'm saying? We got to really know and understand that even some of our, in, our, in some of our closest circles, y'all, not everybody are true sheep. Or not everybody fully surrendering to the ways of a true sheep. Of a true sheep. And it's going to attract things that's not supposed to be attracted, y'all. So we have to continually be armed up with the armor of God as those who are sent in the midst. In the midst. Who? God in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? We got to watch all those things, man. And it's not to not engage, but it's to have the knowledge so when you do engage, you're armored up. <laughs> When you do engage, it's intentional. You already come in strapped. That's, that's, that's like, that's like if, if, if they got a, if something going down, you know what I'm saying? You, you ain't got to wait to get ready. Now nah, you already come in strapped. You're coming on, but you're coming ready. And that's how we got to engage. Who in the midst of different people, places, and things? Even in our own households, you know? We got to stay armored up. Because some Christians, we get home and we think we could just take the armor off. We think we could rest. And, some, and, and, and our, our homes is supposed to be like that. You know what I'm saying? But in this evil day. And sometimes it could just be seasonal. You know what I'm saying? And you got to be able to discern that. Because sometimes you're going to need your armor. To do warfare even in your household. Oh God. Oh God. And just to give you a, a picture of it, you watch the movie War Room. You're gonna have to begin to loose and bind some things. And we're gonna get into the, the prayer of intercession. Oh God, when we get into the elements, we're gonna get into that. He didn't give you some keys to bind and loose some things. Who to command some things, not with your authority, but with his authority. Who with his authority, Tedrick? You know what I'm saying? To keep the enemy at bay. To keep that enemy out of our house. To keep that enemy out of our marriage. To keep that enemy out of ooh, all the things we have going on. To keep you when you go to school, young man and young woman. Who? To keep you faithful in this evil day. 
You know what I'm saying? That you might walk worthy, man. Because God got something for you that's going to blow your mind. To keep you in line with him, young man. To keep you in line with him, young woman. So you could receive all he have for you. And you not be tricked, man. You not get caught up with fool's gold. You not get caught up thinking the grass is greener on the other side. You know what I'm saying? You got to be armored up. But to keep on going and I have in my notes, man, you know, because we just, we just, who I have in my notes, we just giving you a few tactics, man, as we, as we deal with that, we just throwing them out. You know what I'm saying? And, and who God in the name of Jesus, man. You know, we just throwing them out. So catch some of these gems, y'all, I have in my notes. So when they come across your table in life, you're not going to be surprised. And you will know how to handle it. You're going to know how to handle it and not let it handle you. You know what I'm saying? So to keep going, y'all, the devil also have tactics of using this or using that certain thing in our lives. The devil will also use a certain hymn who God or certain her in our lives. The devil will even try to use us, y'all, to bring trouble in our own lives. In our own lives. And that's what James talk about. And the devil knows this. You see, the devil knows that a man or a woman is tempted away by their own lust in their own heart. They tempted away by the desires in their own heart. And Satan knows that like the back of his hand. He know the Bible front and back, yo. So he know we tempted away by the things that's in us. You know what I'm saying? Let me keep going, man. God, I want to get into that, but I can't. And this is the exact kind of fight that Satan, the devil, want to make it, yo. He want to make it a fight that's up close and personal. An in ranch hand-to-hand -hand combat of, of a wrestling match, y'all. Like some would say in boxing, y'all, the devil want to make it an ugly fight. You got to know that. <clears throat> he want to make it an ugly fight, y'all. He don't want it to be a fight of space where a person could hit and not be hit. He don't even want to make it an inside fight, y'all. He know the gifts that God put in you. But he wants to make it an ugly fight, an up-close wrestling match, yo. A wrestling match. That's how he get down. That's his tactics, yo. So since we know and understand that of our enemy, yo, you know what I'm saying, that he wants to make this a fight of warfare of a wrestling match, we have to know and understand that, the, that, that wrestling, yo, who, God, I have, I, I have in my notes, we got to know and understand about wrestling, that is not how good you is with your hands. It's not about just how good you is with your hands and how you could strike, y'all. But it's about how good you are. Who? How good you are on your feet. <laughs> and how strong you is in your legs. Let's bring this thing all the way back full circle in the spirit, y'all. That's why it's so important for us as Christians, as believers, to make sure our feet, y'all, are strapped tight with the shoes, the sandals that are depicted of the Roman soldier. Or strapped tight boots, y'all, that depicts, y'all, who I have in my nose, which, which has on the front of them, we talked about it. The metal plate, y'all, that, 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 that sits on top of the shoe in order to cover up and protect the shin of the leg, y'all. Which is no other than a picture for us as Christians, y'all. No other than a picture for us as Christians of how we should shod our feet, y'all, with the armor of God called the gospel of peace. Let's bring this thing back full circle. Do you have your shoes on? 
or your strap with your shoes on in the spirit. For the youngsters, I see you got them LeBrons on, but are you strapped with the gospel of peace? Who, huh, Breezy? You want them ones? But are you strapped with the gospel of peace? Are your feet shod? Do you have the boots of the gospel of peace on? Do you have that on? Do you have that on? And, and um, John MacArthur talks about the gospel of peace, y'all. And he talks about it in a sense of, you know what I'm saying, of, um, of the good news. The good news. The good news. Oh, God. The gospel is the good news. And this is so good for us in our community and our culture because I'm under the understanding as I talk to God and as I look at history, our people don't really know what the gospel is. Who is the good news? The gospel is not gospel music. No. The gospel is not the four gospels of, of, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No, the gospel is in there, but that's not the gospel. The gospel is not um, the gospel church of this. So, you know what I'm saying? That's not the gospel, man. And a lot of times when I think about, about history and what God then spoke upon us in, in the book of Deuteronomy of how we would be a religious people. We would serve wood and stone, you know? You see, only a remnant was really being saved, yeah. Though we had churches on every block as a people, you know what I'm saying? And no church has got us through hard times. We real with that. We got to be honest with that. But was our people really getting saved? Was they really receiving this gospel of peace? Because this gospel of peace, once you receive it, it's all about you making peace with your God. 